Hello, everyone. Welcome to uh, 31 Days to a More Effective Compliance Program. Over the next month, I'm going to take a deep dive into the role of human resources in fully operationalizing a best practices compliance program. Each day, I will pick up one topic with three key takeaways, which you can utilize to improve, enhance, or upgrade your compliance program. This series of 31 Days to a More Effective Compliance Program is a production of the Compliance Podcast Network. Six Core Principles for Compliance Incentives Most compliance professionals understand the need to discipline employees who have violated ethics and compliance programs or have otherwise engaged in bribery and corruption. However, many chief compliance officers and compliance practitioners do not focus as much attention to compliance incentives. I have <clears throat> developed six core principles for incentives, which I adapted from a Sloan Management Review article entitled Combining Purpose with Profits and reformulated them for the compliance function in an anti-corruption compliance program. Number one, compliance incentives don't have to be elaborate or novel. This first point is that there are only a limited number of compliance incentives that a company can meaningfully target. Evidence suggests that successful companies are the ones that can translate pedestrian-sounding compliance incentive goals into consistent action and commitment. Number two, compliance incentives need supporting systems if they are to stick. People take cues from those around them and but people are fickle and easily confused, and other goals can quickly drive out compliance incentives. This means you need to construct a compliance support system to operationalize their pro-compliance incentives at different levels and make them stick. The specific systems which support incentives can be created specifically to your company, but the key point is that they deliver consistently because it signals that management is sincere. Number three, support systems need to reinforce compliance incentives. One important form of support system for compliance incentives is to make the incentives visible. As was stated in the 2012 FCPA guidance, Beyond financial incentives, some companies have highlighted compliance within their organization by recognizing compliance professionals and their internal audit staff. Others have made working in the company's compliance program a way to advance an employee's career. Four, compliance incentives need a counterweight to endure. Goal framing theory shows how easy it is for compliance incentives to be driven out by other goals, So even with supporting systems, it is quite common to see executives bowing to short-term financial pressures. Thus, a key factor in creating enduring compliance incentives is a counterweight, that is, any institutional mechanism that exists to enforce a continued focus on a non-financial goal. This means that in a financial downturn, compliance incentives are not the first thing that gets thrown out the window, and if a regional manager misses his numbers for two quarters, they are not fired. The key is that the counterweight has real influence. It must hold the leader to account. Number five, compliance incentives align work in an oblique, not linear way. If you want your employees to align around compliance incentives, your company has to eschew narrow, linear thinking and instead provide more scope for them to choose their own pathway. This means emphasizing compliance as a part of your company's DNA on a consistent basis. And finally, number six, Compliance incentives can be implemented at all level levels. Who at your company is responsible for pursuing compliance incentives? If you head up a division or business unit, it is clearly your job to define your pro-social goals and to put in place the supporting structures and systems. What if you are lower in the corporate hierarchy? It is tempting to think this is someone else's problem, but there is no reason why you cannot follow your own version of the same process. Obviously, this list is not exhaustive, yet it is more important than ever that you demonstrate tangible incentives for your employees to gain benefits, both financial and hierarchical. Through doing business ethically and in compliance with your own code of conduct and certainly in compliance with relevant anti-bribery and anti-corruption laws going forward. It is also a requirement that such actions be documented so they can be demonstrated to regulators if they come knocking. 
So what are today's three key takeaways? First, compliance incentives do not have to be elaborate or novel. You can have them for specific events. You can have them for overall conduct. You can have them for people meeting the deadline to take their compliance training. They can be cash awards. They can be T-shirts, such as are given by AB InBev. They can be coffee mugs. They can be plaques. They can be certificates. The key, though, is that there be an incentive, and that incentive be recognized. Number two, support systems. This was something I'd really not thought about as critically important, but as I laid out in today's podcast and in the article that I referenced, supporting systems are critically important. Obviously, the first one is in the example we gave around if there's a downturn in the economy or cutbacks in the company, the first thing that acts is usually a incentive systems. And that's our incentive programs, rather. That's why you need to have an incentive system in place, which supports that because it drives home the message that even in the downtime and downturn, perhaps even, we are going to support compliance and we're going to value doing business ethically and in compliance. While safety is always number one in a company, doing business ethically and in compliance can certainly be 1B. So having the supporting systems in place. And finally, have your compliance incentives implemented in all levels of your company. Have that at senior management, middle management, lower management, have it go into the employee base. Have it the same in the United States as it is for employees outside the United States. Have it robustly enforced up and down the organization and literally across the globe. It will only give you greater benefits going forward and make your incentive system more credible to employees. Thank you for joining me on this exploration of the role of HR in a best practices and fully operationalized compliance program, 31 Days to a More Effective Compliance Program. 31 Days to a More Effective Compliance Program is a production of the Compliance Podcast Network. Thanks so much for listening.